Hey guys, let's talk about the Tiny Cam Monitor Pro app. I have it running here on my Fire Stick and also here on my Android phone. So basically it works for Android and for Fire Stick or other device that can run Android apps, okay? Back here to the screen, I'm using the remote control. And then I just come here and see all of my camera. Right now I have four of them working. I support different cameras and I'm just show here that I have this Tapo camera working, also Mub View. Here I have this Once View camera, Q5. Okay, it works also with Blink camera. So different cameras basically working back there. Let me just show here that I have even remote control or PTZ control. Here, for example, I got to this um, Mub View camera and here with the remote control, I can just Click the button and come here to the PTZ. So I come down, PTZ, here I can enable. And you see here that I go up and I have the control just right here. So I go left, for example, a little bit of latency. I press here, wait a second and it goes, you see. That's normal for cameras like this. A little bit of latency, but it works pretty fine, okay? So I'm basically controlling this camera. Then I just hit here to come back. Let me just come back here. And you see also, also that I have this option to record. And when I press here, I start recording locally. So basically it's recording right now on the Fire Stick itself. Okay. It's the manual recording, but you can also do the automatic recording. And here you can just listen to sound. There we go, it's working there. And depending on the features that your camera have available, it works, right? Here you can, can just take a screenshot as well. Uh, what else here? See some information about the camera. So the speed, the protocol, frames per second, and also here's some graph. I never saw this working, okay? Well, perhaps so I just need to read more about it, but some information is supposed to come here. Perhaps if I take like longer waiting, I'm gonna see some graph or something here. And then the PTZ and also presets. Here, some extra commands that you can use. You can reboot the camera. Uh, have here some customized tasks. And finally here, you can watch videos if you have them recorded here. See, that I have recorded, the local recorded that I did before. Then I can just play it, okay? So pretty simple, so I can't control the camera. Let me just grab this one as well. And let me just remove this information from here. There we go. And here I have the PTZ as well. So I can control the PTZ. You see that I give, give the command and wait like one second to work, but still good, right? This is a baby cam. This is from Zoomimo. That's the brand, Zoomimo, a baby camera. Then I can just hit here, return, then goes away. I go to the top, I can see more than one camera here. I just go to the next camera, next again, and again. And from here, I can also come to this side. Let me just click here and see, I can select the camera from here as well. C216 from Tapo as well, for example, I can also have the PTZ working for this camera. So it, it depends on the camera that you have, it can work with the PTZ. This is pretty responsive, you see it's a little bit faster compared to the other ones to respond to PTZ. Pretty good. Then I come here and from here I can manage the camera, see live stream as well. Oh, this is, is interesting because I can't get this URL and stream this to YouTube, for example. So you just need to go to YouTube, have your account, and do the process there and can stream from here. So basically you can have your camera working on the Fire Stick, and from here, you stream to YouTube or also on your cell phone if you want to, right? Because it works with cell phone as well. And toggle video stream on and off, start sequence here, for example. When you start the sequence, it's going to change from camera to camera every 15 second, or you can like set up a different time. But it's pretty interesting as well. You can have this watching, uh, running on your TV and watch camera by camera, see? And let me just come here and stop the sequence, okay? 
And also here I can come to the camera settings and from here I can set up everything. So basically the first time that you go to set up a camera, here are some useful information, okay? And the camera status. So basically the camera is okay, it's working, it's connecting to the camera right now, it's enabled. Here you have camera name that you can change, camera on with, that's the protocol. It's a universal protocol for security camera and that's the profile. OnVIF has a lot of different profiles. S is the basic profile that works with the camera. So what I mean here is that the camera must have this protocol so it can work or you can have a camera working on the cloud. Here, for example, with the Blink camera, you need to set up the camera to connect to your cloud. And then you come here to the tiny cam and set up your account to connect to Blink. But for Topo cameras, for example, you can just have connected or connecting directly to the camera using this OnVIF protocol. With my cell phone here, I have, for example, the OneView camera. It's working. Then when I come here to the settings, I need to look for the OnVIF configuration or account configuration. It's different for every single camera here. For example, I can find this on local application. You see that I have RTSP which stands for real-time stream protocol. So basically it's working. Here is the port 554, okay? And the OnVIF, that's the universal protocol. So here has information about the port and verification means you need to have an account here, okay? Local account, you see? I have an admin and the password. So it's a lot of information here guys, but basically you just need to check if your camera has the OnVIF protocol and create an Aloka account here. Mine here is admin and the password, for example, and I'm good to go. As long as you enable this account here, you're okay. Just go to your uh, tiny cam and set up from there. I'm just showing another example here with the Tapo camera. So here I have the Tapo C216. Then I come here to the settings. And from here, this one is in advanced settings and camera account. You see, it doesn't show that I have the OnVIF protocol. It doesn't show here that I have this camera account. Then I just need to enable it and come here and create a username and password. That's all that I have to do, right? I have other video here in the channel explaining how to set up this C216, for example, with the Tiny Cam Pro, right? So pretty simple. So back here to my Fire Stick, you see that I have here for the Q5, the ones view camera, the OnVIF um, brand, because here when I try to select any camera, right? Either you have the model available here, or if you don't, you just need to use the generic protocol here like OnVIF, okay? So I'm good to go. So camera brand is just OnVIF, because the universal protocol, profile asset just leave like this. And then there is the IP address, the OnVIF port number. You don't need to type all those information. It finds for you, okay? RTSP, as we were talking about before, RTSP is a uh, real stream, uh, real time stream protocol over TCP. Everything here is uh, by default found by the, the software itself, by the app itself. And you just need to insert here the username and password. There's some information here that uh, the password is not, is not a strong password, but I'm just testing, that's okay. Okay, then you can also come here to recording settings and here see the frame rate, time lapse, local storage. So basically you can record here locally. Uh, the Fire Stick doesn't have that much space, okay? But it's still, you can record here if you want to. You see here the coda in the archive. You can also connect to the FTP server and send the stream to the FTP server if you want to. Um, delete the archive and also Telegram recording. So it's pretty interesting. A lot of uh, interesting stuff here. And motion detection. You can also enable motion detection here and the camera can start working based on motion object motion and things like this, face detection. It depends on the plan that you have, of course, the software is gonna do this part. So the app is gonna do this part, okay? Sound, you have also email on motion, telegram on motion, zoom track on motion, wake up on motion, you see? Webhook, 
for advanced uh, users that to, uh, want to use webhook. Here's the, the option, video events, FTP, so a lot of stuff. And something interesting as well, if you come here to the main screen, let me just come back and come here to the main screen. There we go. You see here that I have stream profile. You can select the profile there, streaming, main, sub, or auto, power save mode, notification, and web server. See, and I can just enable web server here, set up the web server as well, and it starts running. You see, here I have the IP address, and then I can come to my computer and access the cameras via web browser. I just type this IP address here in the port, 8083, for example, and then I can have the access via uh, web browser. Okay, pretty interesting. Of course, you need to come, don't forget to come to the main settings. Here's the tiny Cam Pro app. I just left the app, so I'll come back now, okay? And then you just need to come here to the settings to, oops, not here. I'm just come back, settings, there we go. Here you see a lot of information as well for the app. And you just need to come somewhere here. Let's see, let's see here, web server, there we go. And here you see the port number for the web server. You can use HTTPS for secure connection, certificates, port forward if you have a router in want to forward to have access from the internet. And here the username and a password, okay? And also can enable guests. So basically just use the username and password here. And then from there, back again here to this part so on the bottom here, you enable the web server. And then when you type this IP address on your computer, web browser, you can type the username and password created there to have access to the camera. So pretty interesting, pretty good, right? So let's come from scratch, not from the beginning. Let me just say that you don't have the Tiny Cam Pro app working yet. You can just come here to your Fire Stick and come to find and then search. And from here, you can find this available on the Amazon App Store. So you just type here Tiny. You can type Tiny C. It's going to show you already the Tiny Cam Pro. There we go. And then you just need to install it. You just need to pay. It's a $3.99 right now, okay? It's a pretty cheap. So just come here and you buy it. And then the first time, of course, you're not gonna see any camera, but the first time you can see this screen here and you go to your network, you scan the network and it's gonna find your cameras, you see? As long as you enable via OnViv, uh, the OnViv protocol, the username and uh, password that uh, we just did did there on the app, you're gonna see the cameras running here, okay? Because it's gonna scam the network. See here, the 192.168.4.110, that's the camera's IP. This one is a wise cam that I have on the network, you see? And it's going to work. Then you just need to add the camera. Let's see here, for example, I just want to have this 216 or I wanna have any other camera here, like the wise cam. The wise cam works with, um, the cloud, right? So just need to enter the cloud information to be able to access the camera. And let's say the Q5 here, for example, though, the ones view Q5, you just check here and then you edit and you see edit one camera. Then you come back here to the menu. Let's just come back there and come to manage cameras. You see that I have Q5 already here. Let me just uncheck because this is the first time that I had the camera. You're gonna see here on the bottom, the other one now, right? That's the the one that I just put it right now, okay? Then I need to come here and set it up. Edit. Here, I don't need to change anything here. If I want to change the name, it's okay, but it just leave like this. You see, it finds everything for you. He knows that it has only camera profile S. He knows the IP address. It finds and populates everything here. The port number, protocol, RTSP, just come here and just put the username and password, right? That you know because you created there on your camera via the app. So that's simple, right? Come here, next, and okay. And password, I just put it there, this simple one, just for testing, of course. And just next, okay. And you go to the top, 
in here, camera status, you see that's going to test our TSP over TSP. So real, real time stream protocol over TSP. You see here the resolution, the image of the camera. So basically it's working here on the hardware ID and everything else, okay? And it's work, working. Then you come here to the manage camera, live view, and you're good to go. We have the ones view here now because now it's the latest one, right? So it's working, ones view camera, mob view camera here on the top, topo camera, working pretty fine, okay? So pretty good, that's the way you can have your cameras working on the on the software, okay? Again, this is the Tiny Cam Monitor Pro. You can get yours on Amazon or you can get yours on the Play Store for your Android. I hope you like this video. Please leave your comments here. Subscribe to this channel and I see you in the next one.